Okay, here I'm going to go over calculating bullet trajectory and also some of the factors to consider that impact trajectory and run you through one mock example. So first off, when I say there's many factors, here's just a, an example of some factors that can be taken into consideration. This is a, an online kind of mathematical graph generator, I should say, that will calculate some of these. But you want to be thinking about the drag function, the weight of the bullet, the velocity, uh, the shooting angle, the wind speed, the wind angle, as things as well as the weather, what is the altitude, what's the temperature, barometric pressure, relative humidity, all these can impact the uh, trajectory of that bullet. Uh, this is just an example of the graph generated based on that data. It's a 22. We can see that kind of parabola-like um, angle of travel here, or path of travel. Now looking here, what I've done is a comparison. So on the left again, we see the 22, and the right here we see the um, 50 cal. Now very similar kind of methods of travel. The shape is, looks very similar. However, when we look closer, there are some distinct differences. For example, the initial velocity on the 22 is 1,280 feet per second, where on the 50 cal here, it's 2,820 feet per second. If you look closely at the numbers, while the shape it may look very similar, here we're kind of at dropping down negative 20 feet, uh, somewhere around you know, about 400 yards. Well, here when we reach the negative feet, we're looking we're about a thousand yards. So the distance of travel uh, is greatly impacted. Again, most factors are considered to be the same uh, as far as environmental factors go. But again, the bullet weight is only 40 grams for the 22, 750 grams uh, for the 50 cal. So again, this is just an example of great differences that can occur, um, even though the general path or the general shape of the path may be the same. Now getting into this trajectory, uh, two reference points are needed to define the trajectory of a bullet, um, the path the bullet travels. So here we're going to be looking at the impact of a bullet with a passenger or a driver, in this case of a car, um, coming through the windshield and impacting here. So as, as I said, two reference points are needed. Now how do you go about getting those points? Well, if you look at the way that the hole is made and you can kind of develop a line, uh, that is a great way to get those two um, reference points, especially if it passes through two areas. Uh, these reference points can be bullet holes in the object or the victim, and the entry point or exit point from the victim can be used. So if it came in one way and went out the other way, those, again, can be two points. If it came in the windshield and impacted the person, those can be also considered two points. Gunshot residue or spent cartridge casings can be less specific re reference points, but still as an option. Investigators can use lasers to trace a um, straight line path to help determine the position of the shooter. And that's what we're going to be calculating here. Now when we're looking at calculating trajectory, this is going to be a simplified version. We're looking at an um, impact uh, with a driver. Uh, and we have the path of bullet, we have the windshield. We have the building 60 feet away or 720 inches away. The distance from the window to the bullet is 23.9 inches. Horizontal distance from the window to the bullet entrance point is 23.5 inches. So let's kind of zoom in and take a look at this, it's basically looking at triangles. So what we know is the distance along the horizontal uh, to the window was 23 and a half inches. We have the distance along the path of the bullet window was 23.9 inches. This makes this little right triangle. We know the building is 720 inches away and the Distance was converted to inches to keep all the units the same. And what we want to know is C, is the distance from here all the way to here. What is the distance from the shooter to the bullet entrance point? So how do we go about calculating that? We kind of have the two sides of this triangle, and that's going to be very important. So we take those two sides, and we've got uh, 23.9 over 23.5 is the same as, or proportional to, the distance of C, this distance, over 720. So this allows us now through, to calculate what C is. So we go through 720 times 23.9 divided by 23 and a half, we'll get a C. And C is determined to be 732.3 inches. So what we want to figure out now, we have this distance, we want to figure out what the height of the shooter is. We're looking for this side of this larger triangle. And we're going to go back to, we may remember way back when, when you used the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to determine this because this is a right triangle.
Now, Kathleen Bullet tra Trajectory, what's the height of the shooter? Well, here's our distance now. Here's our building distance. We're going to simply go through and calculate um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, what we're looking to find is b squared. So we've got 720 squared plus what's going to be b squared is going to equal 732.3 squared. So let's go through and calculate that out. Go through, we add those. We square those, then we subtract those two, we get b squared, this distance squared equals one uh, 17,900. We go through and take the square root of that and b will be 133 inches. So what's the height of the shooter for b? Well, it would be 133 inches.